Yeah, so thanks uh, for coming here. Uh, my name is Jochem Beilart. If um, you said it way better than I did. Yeah, if you can't repu uh, reproduce the sounds, that's okay. It's uh, quite <laughs> Dutch. Um, I've been part of uh, the trade team for uh, almost three years, and now since uh, this year, I've been uh, at the Hive as a data scientist and project manager. And what I'd like to talk about is uh, about this co collaboration we've been doing between uh, Trade and the Hive, uh, we call the data team, uh, for which we've been loading uh, many studies in, into Transmart. And if time allows, I'll also like to uh, talk a bit about the fair data principles. So um, if you're ready to tune out, what I at least want you to remember is, uh, is, that, is, is this what's on this slide. It's... Um, <coughs> uh, the collaboration we have and how Transmart Arborist plays an important role in our uh, data curation process and uh, something about fair data. So <clears throat> some of you might have seen these, uh, these slides probably. Um, I'm at the, I work at the Hive and we're an open source uh, software company uh, focused on bioinformatics and translational research. We have offices in the Netherlands and uh, here in Boston, well, here in the US. And our uh, core values are uh, share, reuse and specialize. So what this means is we, uh, we like to take tools from the open source community, um, improve, improve upon these tools and uh, give it back to these communities. Thanks. It's not, uh, I didn't invent it. Um, so this is our team, at least uh, as it was in, uh, in January, I think it's uh, grown to about 40 people now. Uh, here you see uh, Wibo Ruslan and myself in our new offices. Uh, they're both here as well. You should definitely attend uh, the workshop and talks they're giving. It's not a slide of our new office. <clears throat> so the goal of uh, the Hive is to um, build a fully open source research tech BIM for all translational research IT. And you see many logos here. I think uh, most important ones on this is, of course, uh, Transmart, but also I think more downstream, uh, Jupyter and R are things to remember. <clears throat> so the areas that uh, the, uh, the Hive is active in is in uh, the clinical and bioinformatics. Uh, data, which is uh, focused on Transmart, C Bioportal, real world, real world data, and we have uh, Odyssey, and also mobile and sensor data. Uh, projects we do here are uh, Radar CNS and EMIF, but the uh, project I'd like to talk about today is uh, CTMM Trade. <coughs> so, CTMM, there's a large public private consortium. Uh, many partners and large budget and ideas that uh, they do different kinds of research ranging from uh, diagnostic clinical diagnostics to uh, imaging and trade one of the projects is uh, meant to combine the research uh, the IT efforts of these different projects and group them in a single organization uh, that's how uh, trade was born so <clears throat> you see some of the members, I think this slide is a bit dated, so uh, what you see here is uh, there's many academic partners and hospitals, but also uh, uh, institutes like uh, computer institutes and also the Hive and Philips. <clears throat> so this is the trade data workflow. The idea is here on the left, you have uh, data generating uh, parties, hospitals and also biobanks. And through certain, after certain animation, um, the data enters the trade data domains. So there's uh, analysis flows for clinical data, imaging, and experimental biobanking, and this flows into Transmart. And of course, downstream, there's uh, anal analytical tools. <clears throat> so what I'd like to talk about now is the, the data team. Um, its purpose is to help study owners or study representatives to 
accommodate their data in, uh, in many of the tool, tools in the trade portfolio. So you, we have uh, data warehousing and anal analytics. This is more spring type databases, uh, more of a data entry tool. Uh, the European Genome Phenome Ar Archive, the EGA, for storing uh, raw data, and also imaging or open clinica. Maybe some of you know this. <clears throat> so this is the team we have. We have um, at the Hive, we have ETL specialists. Uh, most of them have a bioinformatics background. Um, and they re do the real... E ETL work with uh, the different tools. Um, at the hospital, we have uh, Annemieke Imstra and um, Riska. So they're really data managers. They, they don't know the tools, but they really are into the research. And we have uh, an operations uh, team that does um, well. So the operations really knows how to run stuff and Data managers know the research and the ETL guys, they know the tools and the bio and how to communicate with the, the researchers. So <clears throat> the data loading, what we did was we started in uh, 2015 uh, with the first studies and now we're at uh, approximately 20 different projects in Transmart. So these are uh, wide, very diverse projects with uh, lots of imaging or more focus on, uh, on molecular profiling. Um, this is, of course, a very difficult task if you want to accommodate this in a single Transmart and still have it make sense. So what we used is a standardized tree template uh, that sort of fits most of these, uh, these studies. So to walk you through our workflow, um, on the left you see uh, the flow we think uh, we're actually doing. Uh, on, the, on the left side of this uh, axis you see the work that uh, uh, we as the data team are really performing. And on the, on the right we see, you see the, the input or the tasks that are required by a study representative. So this is really someone appointed by a project to represent the, the outcome of this um, data in Transmart. So where it starts is usually that through operations, um, a request for a new project um, is given. And what we do is we evaluate whether this is a is, a, is really a possible is, is a possible candidate for Transmart because not all uh, not all projects are true candidates. <clears throat> so together with the study representative, um, we work on uh, them providing the source files. We have um, we to accommodate this. We have a data requirements guide which uh, really explains what is expected of the data prior to it being in, uh, in Transmart. And we uh, make it easy, easier for uh, the study owners to, to give the data using uh, templates. So typical formats here are uh, Excel and SPSS files. So the next step is uh, that we try to create an understanding of uh, what the project really means. So often, uh, unfortunately, it's the case in, in Transmart that you need to uh, know what kind of research questions to ask to a project, uh, well, to accommodate it well in Transmart. So this is an important step. And then uh, we do the data modeling with input from uh, the study representative. So this is really the, the moment where we translate the, the data model of the study, the native data model, to that of tra Transmart. Uh, some limitations uh, here are that there's only uh, one sample per patient per concept node that's possible in Transmart. Uh, no temporal context. So uh, luckily this is uh, changing in the, in the 17.1 uh, project 
where this uh, will be uh, ho hopefully a lot more flexible. And the risk here is that uh, you can really limit the, the research questions you are able to ask. So this really brings down the, the functionality or the use, use, usefulness of the data in Transmart. <clears throat> so next, what we do is um, we prepare the files. So we have the, the source files and we need to prepare them so they can be uh, loaded with an ETL tool. So uh, maybe a question for the audi audience. Who has ever uh, loaded studies into Transmart? And who has seen the, the staging files or knows a bit about it? Okay, so let me let me give you an example. So here we have, um, you, you don't have to look into spe specifics, but here you see uh, two data files. There's a, uh, some low dimensional data and there's a high dimensional uh, microarray expression uh, data file. So this seems easy, but of course there's many files that you need to, uh, to create. So here are some of the files that uh, are needed here. On the left, you see the column mapping file. The, the, in, the, the content of this is that uh, the first column is a, date, is a file that you have your original data in. The second uh, column is, uh, is a concept path. Uh, this is uh, actually what creates the, the, the tree in Transmart. The third column is uh, the column name in the, the column number in the, in the file that's in column one. And then there's uh, the last one is the data label, which is appended to the category, uh, to column two for the concept path. So this is a quite a complex uh, file. And as you can imagine, if you uh, want to make changes, you have to make changes to uh, many rows in, in these files. Of course, there's also uh, parameter files for which you set uh, what kind of high dimensional nodes this or what kind of data types. And for the high dimensional data, su subject sample mapping files. You don't have to look into it too much, but also here the full path is described that it's loaded into Transmart. So what you see on the left is uh, the cell line use case, which is our example study in traits. You don't have to uh, look at it, but it's it's no, it's quite a normal tree, I'd say. It's a, it has uh, uh, 67 um, concept nodes in the column mapping file and 24 subject sample mapping files <coughs> because it has a, a high number of um, molecular profiling data. So as you can imagine, the, what occurs is if you need to make changes to this tree, you need to affect all these different files. So you have different uh, rows in each uh, column mapping file that you need uh, to adjust and also these uh, subject sample mapping files. So here you see um, <coughs> in the bottom, you see an example where uh, one of my colleagues uh, unfortunately missed a colon in uh, one of the concept notes and you get two different notes and it's just... Yeah, it's horrible. But, uh, here we see a, a, a Jira ticket by, um, by Mariska, where she basically asks, uh, hey, can you change this note into the name of this note? And can you change this into this? So this is very, very textual. It's, uh, well, you create errors and it's, uh, most of all, it's, it's super boring. So we wanted to improve this. So what we have is we have a, 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 so the problem is that we have a concept tree that's very specific for each study. I mean, the, di the, different, uh, the different projects, so they can't be uh, a one size fits all. Uh, communicating about these changes are, is, is, is really, it, it, you can't do that very well. And implementing changes is, uh, requires changing many files. So what we created is uh, the Arborist, which is an easy to use drag and drop editor for the concept tree. Uh, you immediately see what, you, what you're doing, what you have in your staging files, and there's no more iterative reloading. So here you see uh, uh, our mascot. He name, his name is Boris because he's an Arborist and he, uh, he will help us make uh, better trees. <coughs> So this is, uh, this is the workflow. 
On the left, you see uh, what happens on our side, on, on the technical side. We have a Python package to, to do this, where you create an editable, editable tree from the staging files. Um, you can launch uh, the, the, the GUI editor and apply the changes made in the GUI editor. I think the most interesting part is that where you can upload the editable tree to a web client, so you can send a link to uh, one of the collaborators that, so they can do the editing themselves and there's no more need about communicating for uh, about changes to the concept tree. So, I'll just give you a demo. <coughs> Here on the left, what you see is you see uh, the, the concept tree as it would be represented in Transmart, but here it's in, uh, in the Arborist. It's, uh, it's exactly the same as it, uh, as it would be in, uh, in Transmart, except that you can make changes. On the right, you see the, 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 the edit panel. So let's say, for instance, um, I have this, uh, this cell line use case study, but I want to uh, change the disease node in tumor. I want to make it uh, uh, more important. So what I can do is I can just drag it up and add a number. And then changes have been applied. Or let's see. Hmm. Cell type. So yeah, this is this is an interesting one. Here we have uh, <coughs> pretty descriptive uh, uh, values for uh, for the different uh, items, but this one is a bit long. Organoids uh, is way too long. So what I want to do is I want to just rename it. So I'm copying this, calling this one organoids. But of course. I also want to still know what it, what it does, so I'm adding some metadata. So what happens now is I'm, I'm content with the study, so I call uh, my ETL specialist and I ask them to, hey, can you make, apply the changes that I've made to this, uh, this tree? So, here on, let me just... <clears throat> so here you see this interface. Uh, the, the web interface, and um, I'm, I'm not going to talk about this too much, but th this is the, the Python package where a technical user can uh, create the, con the, con the editable tree and upload it to the, the web client. If you want to know more, please, uh, I encourage you to, uh, to join our workshop tomorrow. So to wrap this up uh, for the Arborist, we have a Python package for Jupyter Notebooks and a web client. If you want to use a demo, you can, uh, you can do that after the presentation. <coughs> and if you want to learn more about this or use this for your own uh, projects, uh, feel free to send me an email. It's uh, jochem at uh, hive.nl. So back to the workflow. Um, together with the, the study representative, we shaped the tree in the arborist and then we apply the changes to the staging files we have on our systems and load it to Transmart. And after that, we uh, assess the, the quality or at least the, the representation of the data in Transmart with, uh, uh, with the study representative. So if they uh, want to make changes, we go upstream in the workflow and make them in either the Arborist or change the, the data model. And finalizing the project uh, by uh, loading it to the production servers. So something else I'd like to talk about is, uh, is fair data. This is something uh, we think is very important and we're, uh, we're currently are, ex well, we're experimenting on how to uh, correctly implement this. So I've borrowed these slides from um, uh, one of our colleagues in the DTL partnership. They're really an advocate for uh, fair data. 
the problem is this. So here you see uh, uh, the graphs that illustrate well, how uh, data goes missing after many years or the data that's been on a PhD's uh, laptop is uh, no longer available. And how uh, reusability of uh, study data is really, um, well, much worse than you'd like. So here are some, uh, some figures that were uh, published where 50% uh, of the research, uh, preclinical pre research could not be reproduced, which is, of course, terrible. Um, and only 12% of, uh, of data is really still accessible after a number of years. So this, just, this does not necessarily mean that this is bad research, but it just means we can get much more out of, our, uh, of, the, out of the money spent on research. <clears throat> so what we need to work on is uh, interoperability. So the ability to um, let data flow between uh, different components it's, uh, I think, uh, the most relevant uh, uh, problem in computer science has been since the 70s, I think. So, uh, in the past, it was uh, hardware, ha different hardware that needed to be compatible, uh, op operating systems, programming languages, now yeah, IT infrastructure, and then you got communication pro protocols, uh, data representations. Some more stuff. So I think we've been tackling this issue for, for many years already, but I think the next step uh, is really about making uh, data more fair. So this is what, uh, this is what they've been connect, findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable. I expect that uh, uh, Nicholas Blomberg, who will be talking on Thursday, will be talking about this as well. It's, uh, it's very interesting. <clears throat> so what does it really mean? Uh, findable is really about having the data you have in a repository, um, searchable and um, search searchable using uh, open, open protocols. Uh, accessible means that you know how uh, to get access, or, what, or if it's uh, open, then you can just get it. But if it's not, then you know how to get access. So this, is, this counts for both the metadata and the normal data. <coughs> Interoperable is really about attaching the right properties that are specific for the domain that, that of domain of research. So I think this is a, this is difficult task still and um, this is I think where still lots of steps need to be taken and your reusability is about making it available for other people in a way that they understand what it means I think I'm out of time or not yeah, yeah. Questions? questions yeah